everybody. Video here for you today. Hope everybody had a good weekend. I did. My daughter was in town with some friends. She actually allowed me some time to visit with her, so that was cool. Today, we're going to go talk about a culture that was existing same time as the mound builders. This is the Republic of Cacassia right here. Doesn't say exactly where this find was made, but I assume it was in this region right down here. Here's a story that came out yesterday in the Siberian Times. Lifelike face of tattooed Tashtik man seen for the first time behind a stunning gypsum death mask. Aged 25 to 30 when he died 1,700 years ago. He is from the mountainous region of modern-day Caucasia. And here is a gypsum death mask, a tattooed death mask. And they did some studies on what he looked like here. Let's just take a look. There is a death mask coming from Siberia. Same time the Mayans were using death masks and even the mound builders in a few videos I did. They were using death masks. But it says a new CT scan has revealed the face behind this painted gypsum death mask that were all the rage with the ancient Tashtik people who were settled cattle breeders and farmers known for their idiosyncratic burial rituals. It says he had brown hair, although the scan gives him a red punk look and is believed the pigtail he would have worn have been cut off before his burial. He is the only Tashtik mummy so far found with tattoos, but the most striking and unexpected aspect is a long suture on the side of his face from the left eye to the ear, a scar that had been sewn up. And here's that CT scan of a 1700 year old burial found here with a gypsum face mask. So current technology gives us a pretty good look into this guy's face, the guy who existed here. 1700 years ago in Siberia, same time as the mound builders, other people. And there are some other similarities here between these cultures. It says archaeologists want more research on this, but the current best guess is that the suture was stitched after his death, perhaps to mend his disfigured face after a wound, possibly a fatal blow. In other words, to improve his looks before his journey to the afterlife, final confirmation is still needed that his facial embroidery was post-mortem, however, but they seem to be concerned how this guy looked before they put him in the ground here. You can see here from the left eye to the left ear, it was sewn up. A little bit of wondering about what that was all about. Also, side of his head here told the story, and I think this has to do with afterlife rituals. Now, this story caught my eye because I've talked about Kakasia before. If you remember this Head mystery from Russia I talked about in my ancient history news video from April. What was found in this head? A ram skull. This was a strange, strange story to do. But pretty interesting. Same region, but this culture that made these was existing maybe four centuries before the culture I'm talking about today. This gentleman was buried in a burial ground in a log burial tomb. It says his skull was trepanned in the temporal area on the left side explained. Dr. Svetlana Pinkova. The hole is rather big, six by seven centimeters. It was made post mortem. Expert analysis shows the hole was made by a series of blows with a chisel or hammer type tool. It says Dr. Pinkova said, We think it was made to remove the brain during an elaborate burial rite. Likewise, she thinks the facial scar can be explained in similar fashion. They took all these post mortem rites very seriously and did not save on this. They could not just put a mask on a disfigured face. It would be great to attract an experienced surgeon to research this suture to get full clarity. Was it post-mortem or might it have been made in his lifetime? Our research is complicated by the fact that we cannot take the mask away from the face. It would cause too much damage. So we must research this stitching using other methods. So that's why they are using the CT scan here. Here's that gypsum face mask covering the skull here. Teeth seem pretty much intact. They cannot remove it from the skull. But this guy was found in a log burial tomb, just like some of the mound builders from the same time in America were found. Also, the clay death masks were found in ancient America here, a gypsum death mask. Gypsum was pretty important to a lot of cultures that I've talked about. So high-tech scans are done here. Here is a look at another one clay mask covering the very lifelike features. It says it was the face of a calmly sleeping person, said the museum here. The mask was very close in appearance to a real face for the first time. We see the face 
of a real young man of this time. The computer scan allowed us to see, so to say, three layers, the layer of the mask, the layer of the face without the mask, and the layer of the skull. That is pretty fascinating, coming from about 1700 years ago. To make this even more interesting, there was a woman found in the same burial chamber with one of these gypsum death masks. These had to be pretty important people coming from 1700 years ago. But that is pretty intricate, pretty well done. Designed there on the forehead in the shape of a spiral. These people were certainly preserved here. Their facial features in a nice deep sleep, peaceful sleep. It says here, the face of the young woman lying in the same burial chamber, also buried in a fur coat, has not been revealed with the CT scan, or anyway, not yet. I would really like to make a CT scan of the female mummy head, she said. I am planning to find a clinic where I can do the research and decipher it for us. For now, we do not know who the woman was or how she was related to the man found next to her, but most certainly, in my opinion, they were partners. Child skeleton was found in here also in the burial chamber along with this child's fur coat. It says here, so too were two burial dummies, an extraordinary phenomenon akin to stuffed dolls or mannequin. These may be explained by the merging of two cultures or traditions, one that buried their dead and the others that cremated them, but that is all up for speculation. It says the dummies appear to represent the remains of those who were cremated. Yet there is also evidence that the men were more usually cremated while women and children were buried. The dummies in full height kind of mannequins were made of leather filled with tightly twisted grass. In the chest area, there were leather pouches with the charred bones remaining from the cremations. The mummies, male and female, were dressed in fur coats and they had masks on their faces. The head of one of the dummies did not preserve. Sadly, probably rodents sneaked in and spoiled it. The second dummy has the face covered with bright red woolen fabric with eyes and a nose. On the head was a piece of Chinese silk. Here is a log tomb coming from the Oglakdi burial ground. This has been worked on, research done here since about 1969. Here's a burial found at the site here, dating back to the third, fourth centuries. Here's a close up of one of the burial dummies here with the Chinese silk across the face. Seems the same kind of tattoos were on the silk fabric here. It was on the gypsum face mask. I just thought this was pretty fascinating. I like doing videos where I learn a lot and I've never looked into this culture, but they were existing maybe 1700 years ago, got going roughly 2000 years ago and existed for maybe six, 700 years. But these death masks are pretty cool. Spiral on the forehead. What did that mean? But these people were certainly, in my opinion, a family, must have been pretty important. And of course, there's new technology these days that gives us an insight to what people look like and how ruins were laid out. This burial was found a long time ago, but I guess new research is opening up new questions. We are getting a few answers here, but that is interesting. Was that a burial ritual responsible for the big suture from left ear to left eye? A hole in his head. Well, interesting story here. That is a look at a guy who existed 1700 years ago. Best look we can get from current technology. That is a video coming from Caucasia, Russia here, Siberia. Culture I have not talked about, but some similarities between that one and some other ones from around the world at the same time period. I thought that was interesting. You all have a very safe.